community up there. It's it's yeah, it is. It's pretty different than than what we have going on here in St. Pete. So, all right, we're, we're live. Not live. Oh, so. Keith, we look good. We look good on Facebook. You too, Chris. <laughs> We are looking good with our new equipment. That's all I can say. 21 well, weeks. Took us 21 weeks. We got some, we got all sorts of stuff. What are we, what are we working with, Keith? We've got, I got, we got new lights. We've got these guys right here. We've got microphones. Yep. Big time. We are. Well, so, <laughs> and we have, and we have another guest. Yes, we do. So. We got Chris Butts with us from right down the hallway, right here. That way, that way. Yeah, yeah there you go. That way. So, so we'll uh, we'll 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 wait for some more viewers to come in. We've already got got a good amount of viewers right now. It looks like we've even got some questions. So we'll let a couple questions show up also. But today's topic is going to be we're talking about basically the the Marine Max Technical Training Center there over in Clearwater, Chris. Uh, Chris takes the lead on that. Obviously, the future of you know a lot of you know marine mechanics with Marine Max. So we'll 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 get into that too. And, and this is another episode, guys. I know that you guys all love to play stump the captains or or stump the service tech or stack to stump the service manager, whatever it is. This is another great guy to you know bounce things off. You guys want to ask, ask those technical questions about your fuel filters, fuel water separators, inboard outboard engines. Let's uh let's try to stump Chris here. He might be a little tougher to stump than Keith and I. So, yeah, we had a lot of. We're going to play stump, something here. <laughs> so. Hey, well, Boat Boy of Louisiana is still here with us. He may have to run, but he goes, How do you get your boat off the trailer when you launch it in shallow water? Um, get a run and start, slam on the brakes, and <laughs> let it fly pray, out. Now. Pray for the best. Um, well, I mean, around here, we do a lot of just powering off. You know, I mean, the, some marinas, some ramps, you know, don't want you to do that because it can end up kind of doing a washout in back of the lift or back of the ramp. But, um, you know, try to just get it back in as far as you can and just power off. And when you're backing up on that trailer, if you take the wheel and shake it back and forth and get that the, the motor spinning around, a lot of times that'll help break the friction of the boat on the bunks and help you slide out a little easier rather than just going straight in reverse. So, you know, don't be afraid to, to spin that wheel around a little bit. Yeah. Also, also take note of what trailer you're using too. I mean, I know that they're not real popular down here, but all those scary stories that you see at boat ramps, most of the time they're going to involve some sort of roller trailer opposed to, you know, bunk trailers like we're used to. Right. So, okay. So that's that's a question from YouTube. So that's we've talked about that before. We're on YouTube and Spotify and Facebook. So if you see us answering a question that you're not sure of, that's why. So um, drop your questions. Drop your questions down below. But without further ado, let's uh, let's jump into the topic today here. So Keith, I know that you're probably a little bit more familiar with uh, what Chris does, and you know you guys working there on, you know at the at the Steinbrenner Field at the at the Yankee Stadium of Marine Max, so yes, it is. So, so Chris, tell us a little bit about uh, the operation that you're running over there in Clearwater. The uh, Technical Training Center is a program that's designed to take a mechanic that has gone through some basic training already. So, either a technical school like uh, Marine Mechanics Institute or a local community college like Pinellas Tech or Marchman or Manatee Technical College. Those are all over here around Tampa, around me. Uh, and take the education that they learned there and elevate it to Marine Max standard so that we can get them familiar with exact products that we service, that we sell. We can get them in front of customers uh, working side by side with technicians to break the nerves of the, the new job, new position, uh, fear of messing up nerves. Um, they, they've had six months in the program to work with technicians, to work with customers, to interact with service managers and service writers so that when they get a position somewhere within the network, uh, within the Marine Max network, they aren't deer in the headlights. They, they got a comfort level with them, which 
being comfortable in your job is it, it conveys to the customer when you feel good about what you're doing and you aren't nervous. So that, that that's kind of the goal of the program. We were going to polish their skills from what the technical schools do and try to perfect uh, what they've learned, add to what they've learned, uh, all the way up to diagnostics with the, the diagnostic computers on Volvos, on Yamahas, on Mercury's. Uh, we get them hands-on uh, in the boats with uh, seasoned service technicians and riggers so that they can work side by side and see real life scenarios, which is what schools are lacking in. I mean, they're great in their training aids. And, uh, you know, this is a multimeter. This is where you put the, the leads. But now let's put that motor on a boat and add a boat system to it. And that's a whole new world. So the, the program here is designed to get them to the next level past the, the school. Um, and we aren't strictly hiring out of schools. We hire, you know, a, a one year experience boat technician, two year experience boat technician that wants to get their foot in the Marine Max door, uh, but they've been having trouble doing it. Come in the program, six months in here, and we try to get you into a location. We try to get you where you want to go um, in the nation, but that's definitely dependent on openings, uh, you know, open positions for technicians at that marina. But there we got we got them all over the eastern seaboard, all the way to Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri. So lots to choose from. What what is that what does that program look like from from the perspective of somebody that's entering it? So so you enter your program and you know what what does your day look like? How does it progress? How long is it? Um, they you know, sweet things of that nature. We do uh, it's Monday through Friday, eight hour days. Uh, so it's you know the the banker's hours, the Cadillac of the marine industry right now for the six months that you're in the program. It um, Monday through Friday um, is broke up differently. So for the most part, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is going to be classroom online learning. Uh, we have access to all of the Mercury online courses. They will do Mercury distance courses. Uh, Mercury's doing online labs right now, so they can be within the six months, be well towards their Mercury outboard and stern drive certifications. Uh, we do online Yamaha training, online Volvo trainings, uh, even online uh, distance Volvo classes, so they can be on their way to a Volvo uh, diesel certification, not gasoline, uh, Volvo diesel. We like to bring in uh, when uh, COVID permits, uh, SIMRAD comes in and does training for us, mm -hmm. and that gets technicians SIMRAD certified. Uh, Volvo will come in and do in person classes and get them technicians certified on D4, D6 Volvos. Uh, VC Vodia, which is the, the diagnostic equipment and engine computer systems of the Volvo diesels. So we try to get a, a good rounded amount of learning from computer based to some lecture to the hands on, uh, which is in my mind, the most important. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's all about that real world training. I mean, how many captains are out there, Keith, that, you know, I mean, it's really not that hard to get a captain's license. No, I mean, you know, there's a lot of online classes and stuff like that, but we're, you know, we're fortunate with CETO right down the street here, but, uh, you know, recommend <laughs> that. <laughs> but, but for those of you guys watching, I mean, if you've got family, friends, you know, kids that, you know, kids, young men, young women, whatever that are aspiring to be mechanics, you know, Marine and they're getting in the Marine business and are already, you know, leaning that way, you know, reach out to Chris and then he can get you the, you know, if you can get into this program, you know, it's great. I mean, I just, I'm, I'm here. So I see it. I see all these people come through and it's an apprenticeship. I mean, they're working right next to the techs out here and doing stuff. Then they're up here in the, in the classroom and uh, it's a, you know, it's a great opportunity. And then, you know, you get done with it, you graduate, I guess, right, Chris. And then you get placed to, you know, a store that might be over in Pompano or maybe Miami needs somebody or, you know, up in Baltimore with Donnie, you know, and you go up in there and work with him. that was on with us a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, we try to get you where you want to be because, you know, if you're happy where you're at, then you're happy in your job. Um, and I do, I'm constantly hiring for these positions. Uh, 
I need people right now. It's it's a rolling program, so every month I hire one or two persons. So you, you know, you need to be at the top of your game if you're in school in a technical program. Uh, work hard. You know, good. Keep your grades up. Stay at the top of your game and uh, definitely get in contact with me. You can reach me at chris.butts at marinemax.com. That's C-H-R-I-S dot B-U-T-T-S at marinemax.com. That's my email. So contact me if you want more information, and I'll be glad to email you out a synopsis of the program and, and how it works. Uh, it is a great opportunity to get your foot in Marine Max, you know, the premier marine dealer in the nation, to, to be part of a family of technicians that is unsurpassed by any I've ever worked with. Cool. So, hey, Chris, can, what's your background in this? I mean, how did you how did you end up here at Marine Max Clearwater, uh, you know, running this course or this course or this uh, technical training? My uh, as a fledgling, I, of course, went to college and got an aviation maintenance degree. So I worked on aircraft with an airframe and power plant license for about seven years. I worked with companies like uh, Southwest Airlines and uh, Learjet. And uh, I always had the, the, the boat and boating in my blood. I grew up on Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri. So that, that's my home. Um, and I wanted to get into the marine industry. So I found a, a marina that the service manager was a, an ex Air Force pilot. And he hired me just on my aviation experience. And since then, I'm Honda certified, Mercury certified, Mercruiser certified. Uh, got a job at Marine Max in Lake of the Ozarks. Uh, and from there, Marine Mechanics Institute in Orlando hired me to be an instructor. Uh, and I did that for seven plus years and uh, then got uh, this opportunity with Marine Max. And I always loved the company. So I wanted to you know, come back home, I guess like you could say. Nice. Lake of the Ozarks. Oh, Keith, we lost you. You've, you've, you've gone black on us. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get them back. Uh, anyway, Chris, while, while I got you here, what, uh, how, how has it changed for you? I mean, we always talk about, I mean, Marine Max is such a big company, man. I mean, whether it stores up in New England, stores down in Florida or, or out to Lake of the Ozarks, what, what are some of the main differences that you've noticed, you know, in boating, you know, between that massive freshwater lake environment up there down to, you know, our peninsula down here in Florida? There, you know, the only real difference is salt water and fresh water. Um, the, the love for boating is the same. The boats you work on are the same. Uh, fresh water stuff lasts a whole lot longer than it does in salt water. I mean, they're still running 1992 Mercury outboards up on the Lake of the Ozark, <laughs> and they're yeah. still running strong. You try to find one down here in salt water that's been running that yeah. long. Uh, but other than that, the industry is is pretty parallel across the entire nation, no matter where you're at. Um, best industry in the world. Uh, everyone loves it. Uh, the skill set of technicians that differ from freshwater to saltwater. In saltwater, you need to have another set of skills on how to remove Keith. corrosion. You know, corrosion is a big problem. There's Keith. Hey, Keith. You, you all right? We were worried yeah. about you. I thought you guys left, but <laughs> no. <laughs> well, welcome back. Thank you. Chris is just talking about, you know, different the different skill sets of technicians between, you know, a place like Lake of the Ozarks and, you know, down in Florida. Yeah, a lot of difference with the corrosion and salt down here. And, I mean, we get a boat traded in or somebody drives, moves down here from up north or, or out west on those freshwater lakes, man. I mean, boat could be 10, 12 years old and looks brand new. Yeah. Anode, anodes are original and in brand new condition. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But how, what what changes have you seen? I mean, from 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 training a new guy. I mean, that's got to be tough training new guys and stuff. You know, in, in an industry that's. It, I mean, it is changing so quick. I mean, think think of. It, it feels like yesterday when Mercury released the first supercharged Verado, and now and now look how far along we've came today i mean how, how do you keep up with you know keeping your guys at the top of the line at the front of the industry and 
and just staying ahead of the curve before it's, you know, obsolete technology. Training. I mean, we, we do, we're always doing, anytime there's a uh, factory offered training, we're doing it. Um, and that's the only way you stay at the, at the top of your game and a, ahead of the curve because you gotta, anytime the manufacturers come out with new technology, they put out training immediately for it. Uh, and in our program, in the, the training program here, you're right there with access to it. And at any marina, you know, all of our service managers are wonderful about sending their technicians to data training to keep everyone on top of their game because the bottom line, the better our technicians are, the happier our customers are. So it's a win-win situation. Yeah. Have you ever been up to Fond du Lac? I have not. It's cold up there, I hear, though. So uh, let, let me tell you a little story. I graduated college from USF, uh, not last December, but the December before. It was December 18th, and they said, congratulations, Nick, you're going to sell boats in sunny Florida. So they put me on a plane to Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, to go to the mercury plant on the 21st. And I went up there, and, man, it was in the 20s. And, and I was as cold as I've ever been. And when I went to... I went in an Uber and I said, man, it, uh, it's freezing up here. And they said, well, you, you came up in a heat wave. Right. So I don't want to go up there when it's not a heat wave. <laughs> no, no desire. But it, it was great, man. I mean, the whole town's basically mercury. I mean, they, they, they bleed mercury right up there. Absolutely. Lifeblood of the area. It is. What do you anticipate next just from, you know, kind of the trends that you've seen and stuff like what, what do you see, you know, as a, as a technician side of things, how, how it's changing, you know, moving forward, you know, what do you, what do you think the next few years look like? Technology is going crazy. Um, if you want to know what's going to happen in the marine industry, look at the automotive industry and it, it's going to be following close behind. Uh, Digital technology that is going into these boats is mind-boggling nowadays with digital switching where, you know, the, the captain can turn on the lights down in the cabin all with a multifunction display. Everything, you know, your conventional switches are going away. Everything's touchpad. So having a little bit of training on those technologies and, you know, being able to work your way through multifunction displays like SimRads or Raymarine uh, is a huge asset for sure. And that's, you know, if we can get SimRad back up here to give more training, that's another advantage because they, you get to go hands on to help learn with all of that. I, I think that's a yeah. good point that you bring up also, Chris, just, you know, just the automotive industry. I mean, I, you know, when everybody's thinking of oh, where, where's the auto industry at now with what's next, obviously, you know, you're going to think self-driving cars or whatever. And, yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it's there with boats. I mean, you've seen the, you know, whether it's, you know, augmented reality or uh, what's, what's it, what's, what's the self docking guys. Help me out here. They had it at Ibex. Uh, for like Ray Mercury. Go ahead, Captain. Ray. I mean, yeah. Ray Marine's got that, uh, the self docking. Um, I, I don't I forget the name of it, but uh, you know, you got the augmented reality with the FLIR um with all the FLIR cameras now what you can do with the boats and then like chris is talking about with the digital switching whether it's through ray marine i mean octoplex like today i was running an ocean alexander right and i mean everything's through that you know you got to go through you know for, from your navigation your electronics your lights you know the all the ac systems you've got it on a little pad like that that you're you know you're running everything kind of like a tesla it, it is it Everything, is. everything's on that one display yeah or, or what's the system that you'll see on on sea rays and whalers what is it is it a naviop system mm -hmm. yep yep it's the naviops yeah got a couple questions here got uh got boat boy of louisiana following us on youtube a ton of good comments guys wait Ask us the questions. Come on. Uh, Brian, I see you watching with us. I know you got plenty of good questions. And uh, why don't you drop a good one in the comments and kick it off? But we it looks like we got a question over here. Um, Doc, Doc Sense. sense. Thanks, Lisa. It was, it was on yep. the tip of my tongue. Hey, Thanks, somebody's paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> you got, uh, got a question over here. I have a question. Why don't people put on their kill switch sometimes? 
Man, how many times have you had a customer call you, Keith? And and I and I'll say I, I've done it. I, I've done it up until like a couple weeks ago, where you can't start your boot. What's the first thing you check? Check the your kill, kill switch. Your kill switch. I, I'm guilty of it. It's happened to me a bunch of times. You know, don't, don't outsmart yourself with these boots, especially on some of this. Uh, you know, it's it's a little intimidating with some of this new technology, but <laughs> your your kill switch will will fool you more often than not. Yeah, that cord may not actually fall off of there. Just you're, you've been washing the boat, you put it away, and you just tap that tab just enough to break the connection. That you know, that's the first thing you want to go and look for right there. Sometimes you got the people that don't put them on when they're running the boat. You know, they're made to hook on the boat driver, and um, right. very few people use them. Um, and I'll admit, sometimes I don't. It's it's the it won't happen to me syndrome. Everyone thinks that, well, it won't happen to me. I don't need that because it won't happen to me. You know, I won't get a rogue wave that throws the boat sideways and knocks me out or throws me out of the boat. That won't happen to me. Well, it does happen. So everyone, I mean, always hook those kill cords up to yourself when you're, when you're driving the boat because it could save your life or other people's lives wherever that boat goes after you fall out. It's going somewhere. Yep. And you guys both know I'm a big proponent, proponent of slowing down going through bridges. You know, my videos on there just because you can doesn't mean you shouldn't. Saturday, I did a boat delivery. I ran through the Gandy Bridge. Gandy Bridge was perfect. Bringing that 42 ocean, or forty two outrage up from your store today, Nick, through the Gandy Bridge. I took a video. Some, it looks like somebody was running down between the spans and it had to been wide open throttle. The, the, the fenders going through there right now, concrete, the wood, it's just freaking destroyed. I mean, it had oh, to no. been had to been horrific, you know. Um, was it an accident? So, so, so I, I don't know. I, I Googled it. I tried to look for, you know, Gandy boat, you know, wreck or accident or anything like that. But um, it's it was it's catastrophic. I mean, I actually looked up. I got the video, but I thought a car went off the bridge. But all the, the you know, the concrete, the superstructure and all that stuff was all fine. But I mean, somebody just I mean, it just it's it's smashed into it. Wow. And I mean, think of all the guys fishing in John boots and stuff, you know, off to the side. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, you don't you don't want to you don't want to throw anybody in the water. Yep. But hook the hook, the kill lanyards up, man. It's just that's what they're there for. Yeah. So. Got a got a question here from looks like Lisa. What are some of the certifications students can receive through the Marine Max program, Chris? As far as certifications, uh, we're more designed to work toward certification. You know, we're going to get you on the road to your Mercury certification, your Mercury Cruiser certification, uh, get you all the online Yamaha certifications. Um, with Yamaha, you got to go their factory location, uh, their dealer training location to finish those up. Uh, Mercury has several locations across the country, but Mercury's doing mostly online, even labs now. Everything's distance learning because of the virus. Um, Volvo, once we get this virus kicked out, uh, will come to our location and the students will get a D4, D6 and an EVC Vodia certification for the diesel Volvos, which is huge. And they can get a SIMRAD certification coming out of the class. But as far as engine manufacturers, I don't like to promise any certifications. It's, we work towards them and I will get you as close as possible to being certified out of here if I possibly can. Well, that's, that's good to know. It sounds like there's plenty of opportunity there. I mean, as far as, you know, get, getting your foot in the door, especially, you know, with, with a big company such as Marine Max, I mean, every, every little bit helps. I mean, I mean, I, I, I started scrubbing toilets before I sold boats and, it's, and that's the truth. So, um, I mean, you're, well, you're giving them all the tools. It sounds like no pun intended. Yeah. Best, best I can. Yeah. We're, that's the whole point of the program is to give them, you know, a, a a foot up the ladder, you know, when they're going out into, to be a technician in the real world. So and somebody so, that's, so somebody that's looking to get into this, I mean, so you, you might have a list of 25 candidates to choose from, right? And you've got one, maybe two seats to fill. What's going to put that technician over the edge, give them an advantage on somebody else. If they're coming from a school, um, I look at attendance before I look at anything. Because attendance to me shows passion, a drive to succeed in life, and a drive to 
make marine the marine industry a career. You know, somebody that's missed, you know, ten percent of their their time. Um, to me, that that shows that maybe you're not as passionate as what we would love you to be here at Marine Max. Um, that's not to say there's not some very good excuses. You know, I've, I've had some military guys come through that when you have a VA, anybody that's been in the military point, and they know that when you have a VA appointment, you don't miss it because you don't know when you're going to get the next one. So there's definitely exceptions. Uh, grades are obviously important, uh, but being able to make good grades does not determine whether you're a good technician or not. Uh, mechanics aren't necessarily open a book and regurgitate the information kind of people. They are my hands on it and I will fix it kind of people. So uh, I look at attendance. Grades are obviously important, but I really want to talk to them. I want to get in front of them when I can on a Zoom meeting um, or in person. Uh, and I want to see your personality. you got to have a professionalism about you. Um, Marine Max customers, they buy boats from Marine Max because we're the best. Therefore, they're buying the best boats. Therefore, they expect the best service and the best employees. So your personality, your professionalism, your following the Marine Max values, it's huge. Absolutely it is. I mean, we've got road technicians here, right? And so we've got, you know, four or five guys on the road all the time. And man, it's so freaking awesome. You come in and you come into work and Mike Nolan, the service manager here, sends an email out. He copies an email to the whole team here that we got from a customer that they're out there working on somebody's boat. You know, I mean, these guys on the road are dealing with, you know, all kinds of stuff and, and not the greatest situations, maybe, you know, get, getting into stuff. But their temperament, their demeanor and, and the way they, they deal with customers is huge. And, and, you know, and that's a repeat customer for us. You know, we talk about, you know, creating fans and how important that is. And, you know, the road crew and then, you know, my riggers, my techs out back on, on all the deliveries I do. You know, the customers are down there. We walk down there to take delivery of a boat, you know, and whether it's Chris Farrell or whoever, one of my the, the riggers, you know, you introduce the customer to this. Say, here's Chris. He's the one that got this boat ready for you. And it is the way it is. And, you know, and, and the people love that. And, you know, and then, you know, you're making friends, you know, and it's, it's a lifetime, you know, commitment that you get or, a, you know, a passion that you got, you know. Yeah, you, you have to make a customer feel like they're a friend, like you, they're not just a number. They need to feel like they're part of the family. And that's what make, makes people comfortable and wanting to come back. Yep. And another thing I get a lot, too, is, you know, I'll see, I mean, Marine Max, obviously, you know, they're known for, you know, the yachts and the big boats and stuff. And and the last thing that, you know, we'll, we'll ever want to feel is, you know, just if you're not buying one of those 70 footers, like on a 19 SPX, you know, you're important too. I mean, how, how many mobile techs do you see get sent out to, you know, re replace a cushion on a 19 SPX or something or, or, uh, or something like that. I mean, they're all important. Now, all those boats, I mean, that 13 super sport is, is, is just as important to us as, you know, the, 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 the big Hatteras or the big ocean Alexander or whatever that may be. Yep. That's the beautiful thing about boating, right? You're at, you're out at the sandbar and he got that guy in the 13 super sporter, the 15 Montauk, and he's docked up next to a guy that's maybe in a 28 bandage, you know, and then you got another guy that's in a sea ray yacht or a galleon or whatever. It doesn't matter. You're all out there. You're walking around, you're having fun, you're meeting people. You know, you got to, you might have a, a mason bricklayer guy. You got a doctor, attorney. You know, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's the great equalizer. You're, you're. It's we enjoy the same thing. Yeah, yeah. It, boating is a family. It's, uh, yep. it, it, it's a, a group of of people. Kind of like camping is the same group of people. It, it, yeah, makes you feel like you're part of a family, part of a group. Everyone's having fun. It's a way to leave all your worries behind and, and enjoy life. Yeah. That's why our by, business is booming right now. Yep. United by water. We hear it every day. Yep. All right. Looks like we got a technical question for you there, Chris. I uh, got a YouTube question from Bruce. What is the average spark plug life on a Mercury outboard Verado V8 300 horsepower 
running Fort Myers, 1.7 years old in 113 hours. Spark plug should last you easily into the 200s. Uh, on the Verados, you know, if, if you do not service your spark plugs, uh, you'll start noticing misses, a uh, little hiccups on your acceleration. So it's important to stay up on, on the services, but I know that the spark plugs are not cheap on Verados. Um, so it's a toss up right there, but just know that think about your car and you don't change your spark plugs that often in a car, but what RPM does a car run at? It runs at like 1500, 2000 RPM, right? All right. A marine engine is hitting 6,000 RPM. That's where it lives its life. So you're wearing those plugs much faster than you do on a car. Um, most certainly not cheap, but when it comes to voting, boating pleasure and fun and not having problems, it's definitely worth doing it. Um, you can look on your service interval in your owner's manual and it should give you uh, the service intervals on those plugs that Mercury recommends. Cool. Hope that answers uh, your question, Bruce. Looks like we had one from last week too, um, from Lee, fuel water separator question. What kind of fuel water separator do you recommend on a boat? Whether that's, uh, what are the couple different kinds that there are? Definitely go with an OEM, an, an original equipment manufacturer. So if you have a Mercury, get a Mercury water fuel separator. Fuel separators are or a dime a dozen, you can order them anywhere, but the right one matters because water fuel separators have flow rate. If you have a fuel separator that's too slow of a flow rate, you're starving your engine of fuel. Therefore, you're going to end up running it lean, and that's going to that can blow up your motor. You can detonate a piston by running it lean. Um, on the flip side, you can get totally the wrong water separator, like say made one made for a farm implementation that has a glass see-through bowl. That is not legal on a boat. That is not Coast Guard approved. That's not ABYC approved. That is an, an extreme danger because that glass bowl can break due to heat or impact, and you got a raw fuel dump into your build. So if you stick with your manufacturer's recommended fuel separators, the Yamaha brand, if you have a Yamaha, the Mercury brand, if you have a Mercury, um, they will have them in their accessory manuals. You're always safe. Yeah. When in doubt, read your manuals. I mean, not even in doubt, just, just, you, you get a boat, go through the manuals. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't throw away the instructions. It's not a piece of Ikea furniture. No, you still need to save those anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, cool. Got, got another question here. Keith, maybe you can help me out on this one. It's a little bit more of a, a case by case basis. We had Pete last week ask, uh, does Marine Max help transport boats? like from Florida to New York or vice versa. Um, yeah, it, I mean, we can. Yeah, I mean, we can. It's going to depend on the size of the boat, of course. You know, I mean, you got, you know, like your different professional yacht transporters and, and all that. But, but I know here at this store, for sure, we have for our clients and stuff, we'll, you know, we'll move stuff around or somebody's over here and maybe they want to go to the Bahamas, but don't want to run the boat all the way around. You know, we can make arrangements uh, through the service department and uh, you know, get the boat transported over. Yeah. You guys saw me do that the other week down in uh, Key West when I was down there, I was grabbing a boat actually with the owner on board. We uh, he was trading that boat in on a 44 Aquila and we, I went, they, they, they flew me down and I, and I rode up with him back to St. Pete so he could do the, the, the handoff. Cool. Hey, What's Chris, you, you got an attaboy there from Dylan. That's an, you see that there? No. Where's that? He said, uh, he says, uh, Hey, Hey, wanted to give a shout out to Chris. I went through the program in the first group. I've been working with Marine Max ever since. Thanks again, Chris from Dylan oh. Burgess. Oh yes, absolutely. Hey Dylan, how's it going? That's awesome. So, so how many people, how many people you think have gone through the, through the course and how long we've been doing it here now? We're going on five years and we've had 54 gone through. Oh, cool. Nice. Do, do a lot of them stay local or do you see them go kind of throughout the country? What, what, what do you see more of? 
the uh, most of the most of the time they're good. They go to other locations. Uh, staying local, is, you know, Clearwater only has so many technicians. Uh, St. Mm-hmm. Pete, same thing. So it, it it's pretty tough to come into the program and say, no, I'm going to stay in Clearwater. That, that that's difficult because the odds of there being a spot uh, here in Clearwater are slim. And then it's up to the service manager's discretion uh, whether he wants to hire you or not. So. Yeah. I always tell people that are coming into the program have three locations that you would love to live. And I will try my best to get you in one of them. But again, it is totally dependent on whether that service manager has a position open uh, that they're, they're wanting to fill with an entry level technician. Will you see guys go through or, or girls go through the program a lot when like, for instance, if they're a boat washer, they might be, just kind of kind of a yard hand or something like that. Will you see people m- move in through, you know, even if they're already working at Marine Max or whatever that may be, will, will you see them kind of transition into your program a little bit? Absolutely. Yeah, it's happened uh, several times. Um, Rick, New Jersey sent down one of their, their employees and he went through the training here, went back up and to be a, a service technician. So it happens. Uh, we got, Clearwater. We got a gentleman that was a boat detailer, went through the program. Now he's a, a marine technician here in Clearwater. So um, that's a great ass, a great benefit of having this program is it allows Marine Max to promote the go-getters from within. Service managers see talent, they see drive, they see passion, they they see the, the personability in a person and know that they would make a great customer facing technician they can put them right into my program uh and we love promoting within uh giving people a a career ladder uh, a way to move up rather than feeling like they're stuck in the same job yeah yeah lewis lewis from your store nick (laughs) that's lewis came up here and went through clarks and then back down to you guys that's what I was about to say. I remember there, yeah. there a few months ago, Lewis just, you know, he, he was a yard hand, you know, he'd help around the yard and stuff. And then he went, gone, he, he was gone for a few weeks, you know, for a few months, whatever. He, he comes back and he's, and he's working on an engine. And I said, Hey, where'd you go? And he said, Hey, I was in, I was in school over at Marine Max Clearwater. And now he's uh, now he's a tech. So, so that's pretty cool. Yep. yep. Got Brian came in, Brian, good to have your questions back. I was, I was beginning to think that, that we'd have an episode without one of your questions and 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 i would definitely lose a little bit of sleep tonight if that were the case but we're here so so we got brian saying might want to explain how to find open positions at each branch with marine max um there's going to be a lot online there's going to be a lot done through the application portal and stuff like that and um, marine max is always hiring one capacity or another and uh i mean it's a big company dude just just everywhere what, what do you guys have to say about that yeah um your your best course of action is to contact the, the location where you want to go. Make sure that stuff is up to date, you know, online on their careers and their openings. Um, when you come to the program, we'll start contacting. I'll start contacting service managers, you know, four months into it and start feeling out, letting them know that people are interested in their location, uh, you know, in, in a month or two months. So if they have a spot come open, Hopefully they they'll they'll hold it open uh, for someone coming out of the program, but if you're if you're just looking into the Marine Max network, definitely call the locations and speak to them in person. You know the service manager or uh, the sales manager, depending on what position you're looking for. I saw I actually came across on LinkedIn today that uh, I mean you never know where you'll come across. And on LinkedIn, I saw one of the general managers from up in New England is looking for a sales guy or girl, and it's. Uh, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people that want to work in Marine Max. So when you when you see a job opening, make sure you, you pick up that phone, you call, you get in there ASAP because it's I mean, I can say, I mean, working for Marine Max has changed my life a million different ways. And I'm sure that you guys can say the same. Yeah, absolutely. For those of you guys up north <laughs> looking to get into this training program, now would be a good time, right? You can spend winter in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Come down to Florida and, and- – get in it, get done. Get. And our, our Northeastern locations are hurting for technicians. So you, you'll definitely be able to get somewhere back up around your home. There you go. Yeah. If, if, if you can come down and survive the 70 degree uh, winters. It's awful. 
It really is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Were you out at LOZ when they had that big snowstorm and the like the roof collapsed and all that kind of stuff out there at yeah. that arena? Yeah. Yep. And yeah. Yeah. Millions, I saw and millions and millions of dollars in damages. Yes. Just at our Not location, good. just at Marine Mac. It's always something else, isn't it? You got to deal with snowstorms up there. I mean, the panhandle can't catch a, a break with the no. with the hurricanes either. I mean, it's it's something somewhere or another. What's Who's up, Chris? Chris? Who's Thanks Chris? For joining. It's my it's my youngest brother. There you go. So thanks thanks for joining. Thanks for watching. Got any deliveries coming up, Keith? You delivering anything cool this weekend? Speaking of cool, I think we got a cold front coming through finally. Maybe. I don't know, man. Today I thought it was supposed to rain, but it was absolutely beautiful. Like, a, you know, I ran a 45 divergence Ocean Alexander this morning and then uh, picked up that 42 outrage from your store, ran it up here. And I mean, Tampa Bay was just a sheet of glass. It was beautiful. But there's some stuff out in the Gulf up to the north. But yeah, cold front coming down. So. We'll probably have highs of 80 something on Wednesday. <laughs> you know, I might drop, it, drop it down a couple. Yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. Well, it's uh it, it's been a pleasure, Chris. And and you see for you guys on Facebook and YouTube, you you can see Chris's information. So I mean, I definitely recommend it. I mean, it's just you talk about different, you know, people's brains working in different ways. When I look at when I look at an outboard or if I get in the systems of a boat, I know enough to get by. But, man, it, it confuses the heck out of me. If you are one of those people that are hands on, um, definitely would recommend, you know, getting in touch with Chris and, you know, po possibly even, you know, towards a career in Marine Max. It, uh, you, you won't regret that you did. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, guys. So coming up next week, Keith, I'm actually a little nervous. We got a uh, we got a pretty a pretty serious guest joining us next week. Yeah, we got Tyler Layton, uh, who actually once upon a time was our FNI manager here at the Clearwater store, and he's uh, went to a couple different stores and moved on up the ranks. He's now the vice president of finance, and it's a really cool thing. Um, we've got planned maintenance and. Tyler's going to be able to explain that to us, but uh, so I don't want to jump the gun or anything, but I think it's basically for a couple of years, you can kind of prepay and have all your maintenance stuff uh, done, but don't, don't take my exact word on that. It may not be everything, but, but Tyler's going to get in there and get down to the nitty gritty and explain to us, uh, you know, what all's involved in that. I'm definitely going to lose a little bit of sleep the night before that one. Ah, Tyler's a great guy, man. You don't don't worry about that. <laughs> I'm excited. It's uh, it's it's definitely it's definitely going to be a next level topic, and 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 I'm going to be learning just as much as everybody watching because that's something that that we're all looking to learn a, a lot about. Well, you know, so. I mean, just just think about it. You know, you get a boat, you get under warranty and stuff like that, but then any other you know maintenance stuff that you you know you're going to have your hundred hour services and two hundred mm -hmm. hour services stuff like that. If you can knock that stuff out ahead of time, then it's you know you're coast and you're just easy going you know that's no, a no question I, in the back of your mind yeah that's a question i get a lot you know especially from new boat owners it's all right nick you know this is the price of the boat what are we working with here as far as what does it cost to own this boat every year you know what are my maintenances like and for the most part i'm either spitballing or playing a middleman you know getting with a a, a service advisor or something so I, I think the nice part about you know warranties and stuff and you know you know, maintenance and stuff like that is it's uh, it can keep a little bit more of a predictable lineup of exactly what it does cost to own a boot. So I'm excited to learn a lot more yep. about it. It's going to be a good show. So, Chris, thanks for joining us, man. And uh, absolutely. And, and I'll see you over at the Clearwater store sometime. Perfect. Thanks, Chris. See you in a couple minutes. <laughs> All right. Have a good All one. Right, Keith, Keith yeah. you want to sign us off? Yeah, man. Everybody, thanks for joining us. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook at Marine Max Leisure, Instagram and YouTube at Marine Max Online, and Twitter at Marine Max. See you guys next week. Thanks for joining us. See you on the water, Keith. See you, bud.